In this little podcast, I want to go over the basics of how you read scales in a chemistry lab. So let's start looking at these two images. Um, the light brown is a meter ruler, and we are measuring the length of the gray box. So let's look at the top one first. You can see that there isn't a lot of, um, I guess, information in this ruler. It goes up to one to six, but no gradations between the number. So let's see if we know what we actually do know. What's the known number? Well, the known number is clearly between two and three, so the known number is two. But what is the next number? What's the estimate? Well, it's going to be greater than five. I actually think it's point, hmm, I'm going to guess point seven. That's my guess. It could be point, could be point six, could be point eight, but I'm going to guess point seven. So I think that this gray piece of this gray box is uh, 2.7, let's say it's centimeters long. Now when we go down to the bottom, we've got a little bit more information and now we can see that the known numbers are actually 2.7, but because of the scale we can estimate up to the hundredth. And so I'm going to estimate that the hundredth number is 0 0.03. So I think that because the scale is a little bit more accurate, I can predict up to the hundredth of a centimeter. So I think it's 2.73 centimeters. Why don't you quickly try your hand at this? You can pause um, the video and see if you can estimate or identify the known and estimate the, uh, the number that is the estimate in each of these. So in the top row, uh, the known number is 5, it's between 5 and 6, and I'm guessing that it is less than 5.5, so I'm going to guess that it's 5.4. So that is my little estimate for the length of this grey box. But as we can see in the ruler below, we have more information. So because there are more gradations in the lower ruler, we can clearly see that it is that the known number is 5.4. Each of those little marks is 0.1. And so we can estimate it's almost 5.5, uh, isn't it? Let's just double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, so it's almost 5.5, but I actually think it's... Um, it's actually going to be, my, est my estimate is that it's 0 0.08 is the estimate, so that what the ruler is reading is 5.48. So whenever you are measuring something in a chemistry lab, your last number is always going to be an estimate. So once again, pause the video now, try your hand at reading these grids and see if you can... Um, the number where the head of the arrow is pointing. So these are my estimates. One of the things you have to be very careful about is working out what the actual scale is. So what I mean by that is if you look over here, this line is 1, this line is 2, and there are four little gradations between there. So these are not 1. This is, you know, this line right here is actually 1.2, and then this would be 1.4, 1.6, 1.8. So you've got to be a little bit careful there. Uh, likewise, if we come over to this far one, if we look at this, this is 30, this is 40. So what is that? That's got to be 35. So each of these is 1. So for example, this would be 32. So going down here, this line here must be 25, so 26, 27, 28. And I'm making an estimate, my last number here, all of these are estimates, is that it's pointing exactly at these numbers. So that's why I've added those zeros there. Whenever you're measuring the volume of a liquid, you can usually put it in a graduated cylinder. And the challenge is to know where to re record the volume. Because when you put a liquid in, something like water, it forms a, water has a little skin on the top. And so the big challenge is, is where do you read? So for example, am I reading, and this is exaggerated, am I reading 
at the top of the meniscus where it hits the side? Am I reading at the bottom? Am I reading at the top of the middle? Or am I reading here? And as you can see, all of these would give you a different volume. So it's absolutely critical that you know where to read when you read the meniscus. And in actual fact, you're going to be reading in the middle, right at the bottom. Here is an actual image over here of a real meniscus. And so if I was going to, well, why don't you see if you can pause the video again and work out what the volume is in this picture. So these are my two estimates. I think in the photograph that it's it's definitely 52, and I think it's 52.8, so the 0.8 is my estimate, 52.8 mils. And then the image over here, the bottom of the meniscus, right down, whoops, a little bit higher than that, up sort of here. It's obviously 35, and I think it's 35.5. I think if you see it's in like 35.4, to 35.6 within that range, I'd be okay with that. If you were saying 35.8 or 35.9, I think you'd be a little bit off. When you're actually reading uh, the volume of a liquid in a graduated cylinder, it's actually critical that the cylinder sits on the bench, that you don't hold it in your hand. It needs to stay flat on the bench so it's still. And then you need to have your eye at the same level as the bottom of the meniscus. So you need to crouch down to get your eye right. You do not want to be looking above the meniscus because you're going to get the wrong reading and likewise below the meniscus. So you want to aim to get your eye right on the mark like that. So that means you're going to have to adjust your body. So here I've put a little red line to sort of help you. Um, let's assume that your eye is there. So what do you think the two volumes are in both of these? Once again, the meniscus is really exaggerated. It doesn't curve as much as in these images, but use this as your estimate. So pause the video right now and write down what you think the volume is in each of these. So these are my estimates. I think the first volume is definitely 66 and it's above the 66 line. And so my estimate is that it's 66.2. I'll be happy with 66.1 or 66.3 as well. The final one is obviously higher than 28 because this is 25 here, so 26, 27, 28. So it's 28 point something. And so I'm guessing it's 28.7. It's definitely above 28.5. So it's some, I'd accept something like 28.6 to 28.8 would be fine there. So hopefully that gives you a sense of how to read um, scales and how to estimate that final number and you'll have plenty of practice in the chemistry lab so good luck with that